all right so hi hope you are doing well right now so now we are going to discuss about the principle of phase contrast microscopy remember i showed you some uh, real example of phase contrast microscopy i'll also give you some more idea about the experiments that we perform and the type of results that we get with the phase contrast microscopy but here in this particular video we are going to talk about uh, the basic principle of phase contrast microscopy and before going there I want you to understand, I want you to know uh, how it looks like and you, I think you all know that in phase contrast one thing is separate, one thing is unique that is the phase plate which we placed here which is not drawn in this particular picture. So don't uh, just think as this picture is the real image basically everything will be similar only the phase plate is missing which is the major component of a phase contrast microscope. Without phase ring phase contrast microscope is useless okay so what are the extra components that a phase contrast microscope has it has a phase plate phase uh, ring with what is known as a phase plate phase plate this is what it has along with this phase ring and phase plate it also has special special specially modified objective lenses known as phase contrast objective lens because they contains what is known as annulus phase annulus sorry for it. phase annulus is something that they carry so right now i'm going to share the image i'm going to share you a picture which explains the process of phase contrast microscopy which explains the principle of the phase contrast microscopy in clear details okay so let's move on to this and we are going to see it all right so this particular picture will give you a crystal clear idea about how phase contrast microscope works so to understand that obviously you need to have a basic knowledge of light microscopy principle without knowing that you cannot answer you see uh, the light microscopes are very good in terms of seeing objects which are stained stained specimens because the light microscopy works based on the principle of the light to be scattered by the specimen or to be you know absorbed by the specimen or the bright background that is present out there so basically when we stain a sample we are differentiating the sample from the outside and you can see that you know when the staining is done you can put the slide in front of your eyes you can see a dot of red stain or blue stain what kind of stain you are doing right so it has a visual contrast to it it's always important that as the whole principle is based on how the light is passing through a sample then obviously if the sample is transparent then there will be a big problem we need to stain the sample we need to make it stain so that it has different refractive index and based on the change in the refractive index the microscope will give you a good image that is the idea of bright field microscopy but in case of phase contrast microscopy, why we design phase contrast microscopy in the first place? Because there are specimens which we need to visualize in its living form in activity. For example, if you are watching something from the pond, pond water, you put it uh, the pond water in a slide, cover sip and you are going to see it. Or let's say a bacteria culture, you just take it uh, from the culture, put it and you want to see the live activity of those organisms. So to see the live activity, you cannot kill those organisms you cannot stain them because if you want to stain it definitely need to kill them so we cannot do that so if we don't kill them those samples are really not stained they are transparent in nature right so as they are transparent in nature so when we want to see them observe them under microscope we need to either stain the sample but in this case we cannot stain it so we need to design or develop such a way that it should not kill the sample but still we can find better contrast so the biggest challenge is that this is the slide and these are the sample but the sample is transparent transparent sample means light will pass through most of it right but there will be slight difference let's say this is the slide this is the background there is slight difference between the amount of light wave that passes through a sample and passes through the slide there would be a big difference based on that light wave passing through a sample or passing through a slide depending upon the refractive index of the specimen we can form more contrasting image okay what do i mean by more contrasting image understand one simple principle the light is passing the light wave will pass through the through the slides as well as through the sample 
but as the sample has something extra right slide has nothing in it it's blank but so we consider that as a background but the sample has something in it some organelles or something some part cellular activity is going on so there are proteins and other components in the cell which causes the light wave to pass through the sample slowly slowly so as the light wave passes through the sample slowly but the light wave passes through the sample in the background fast much fast so as there is a difference in terms of how fast the light wave can pass through a sample or the background there is a difference right this difference is further extended to call what is known as a phase shift a phase shift you need to understand this particular term to understand phase contrast microscope so see this is the light coming in so there are two components new here one is this phase ring or we can also call it as an annular ring phase ring or annular ring and the extra thing is here in the objective lens itself known as phase plate okay phase plate that is present in the objective lens and annular ring that is the phase ring that we always know phase ring or annular ring that is present near the light source just right after the light source and that is present along with the condenser beneath the condenser this is the condenser so beneath the condenser is the plus so these are the two components unique to a phase contrast microscope and the light passing through this annular ring how the annular ring looks like it looks something like this a slit is present in the center like this it looks something like this i try to make it as easy as possible for you so that means the light will only pass from this blank area not from the shaded area so imagine so that's why these are the blank area this one and this one so this is a cross section view like this not cross actually longitudinal section sorry it's a longitudinal section view so we'll take the microscope here and we make section like this longitudinal you have this so these are the points through which the light will pass and you can see light is only touching the periphery of the condenser and being condensed and this is the sample and what the sample is doing is that sample has something in it so it will scatter the light sample's job is to scatter the light so the light that is scattered by the sample this is the light this 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 portion is the scattered light from the sample and the rest in the surrounding light that is known as a direct light without any scattering from the sample so the light that is passing to the periphery through the objective are what kind of light this light is coming from the background no scattering but the light that is coming from the center of the specimen that is scattered light by the specimen so now there is this two kind of light the direct light in the periphery and the scattered light in the center okay so scattered and direct light there is a combination now what happen is that as i told you that the light wave moves slowly through the specimen faster through the background so that causes a phase shift automatically with the help of annular ring itself we can create a contrast in the image so basically if you want to see something uh, let's say this is a slide and if you want to see a sample as a contrast what we can simply do this cause a contrast or if you do the background dark and the specimen light that is also a contrast so contrast can be generated based on the light and dark change in the light and dark the shadow and light in a particular specimen so which we can achieve with the help of annular ring itself because annular ring itself can give <clears throat> the specimen a light source such a way that the specimen ultimately results in a contrasting image we can get a contrasting image but that contrasting image is little more contrast than the existing specimen only right we are still not satisfied with this image what we did next make this step even more advanced we introduced another phase plate inside the objective lens itself so what's going on in the phase plate you see one thing in the phase plate the phase plate it has most of the periphery areas and the center which was earlier blocked so the portions which were blocked in the annular ring now will be open for the light to pass in case of phase plate 
and the portion through which the light passes in annular ring will be blocked these two places remember it will be blocked in the face plate so opposite of what is there in the annular ring so what happen is that so the light that are coming in direct light you see the direct light it will be tilted it will be blocked but it's not totally blocked it's not totally blocked remember this is very important not totally blocked but little shift is done due to this little shift the direct light is known as phase shifted light after it passes through the face plate so the light is now phase shifted so now the light is phase shifted and the light that is coming in straight after the scattering it has nothing to be blocked so nothing is there to block this light so whatever light coming in after the scattering no one is blocking that light we directly hit that light in our eyes and we can clearly see that light so what we can clearly see that our sample will be more enlightened but the background will be less lightened as a result of this dark background and light colored specimen it always increases the contrast and it increases the contrast several fold so earlier first the contrast can be introduced using annular ring only but with the help of the face plate which is present inside the specially designed objective lens of the face contrast microscope we can do the phase shift of the light as a result it can increase the contrast of the transparent specimen further fold that's how we can get a better resolution image based better image better resolution and i'm going to share some of the image with you so you can take a screenshot if you want to at this moment i'll move on and i'll share some image see this is how it looks like this is a normal image and this is a face contrast image of the same sample same frame everything is same normal face contrast because this kind of organisms which are cilia or flagellated structures extracellular uh, structures are well visualized with face contrast because we cannot get that much of uh, contrast in a light ordinary uh, bright field microscope like this so it's a bright field image it's a face contrast image of the same sample you can clearly see even the components inside the cell due to the differences in light intensity you can clearly see something like this part of the specimen is illuminating light but actually the specimen is not illuminating anything the light source that we provided we put the uh, face plate and ring in such a way that it's going to help us to get a idea of this depending upon the illumination to the sample the background is darker the sample is enlightened that is the face contrast imaging that's why face contrast imaging is so important and that's how the face contrast imaging is done now one more thing that i want to share regarding the practical aspect of face contrast microscopy is to basically how to arrange the annular diaphragm in the bottom as well as in the face ring both of them you need to align them how to align them you can clearly see that there are two things one is the objective face plate another one is a condenser annulus we call it a condenser annulus or annular ring in the condenser region so the condenser annulus and face uh, plate those are completely different in terms of how they function and that's why they are designated here the two different color condenser annulus is bright color means this is the place from which the light will come and uh, the objective phase which is basically dark color because those portion the same portions through which the light will come via the condenser annulus will be blocked by the objective phase plate that's why they are denoted with dark color so how to align them you can see this is misalignment so basically you need to align this objective face plate or face plate simply pp with condenser annulus ca you need to do this very very important when you align face plate with condenser annulus it something it looks something like this this is a proper alignment and with this alignment you see these are only few places and actually through these places only apart from that most of this place are blocked so that will fulfill our principle of face contrast microscopy and that will increase the contrast in a transparent specimen so i'll show you 
another image stating how to adjust the annulus you can see this is the condenser again the same picture and this is a real image actually this is how it looks like when you are going to insert the uh, telescopic finder lens eyepiece and through that eyepiece you can clearly see uh, this this is the condenser annulus condenser annulus and condenser annulus is something that you can control and that you can regulate but you cannot regulate the objective face plate objective face plate is fixed in the objective inside of the objective you cannot change that you cannot modify that so condenser annulus is something that you can change the centering of it you can change so this is not centered pro properly this is also not centered properly but this is a proper centralization so centering is properly done in this particular picture but in this two picture centering is not done so if the centering is not done the face contrast image will not be produced no matter how much you try you will fail to get a good face contrast image okay you can get a good face contrast image if and only if you get a better centering of face plate with the condenser annulus and you need to do this for individual magnification of objective lens 10x objective 40x objective 100x objective you need to do them individually in order to get it okay so once you arrange this then only you are going to see the image and in face contrast image the typical characteristic of face contrast image is to get uh, the bright colored sample with a grayish dark background okay that's what you are going to see so you can take a screenshot now here okay so i believe you have a clear idea about how the face contrast microscopy works theoretical aspect as well as the practical aspects okay so i believe you have a clear idea about the principle of face contrast microscope if you like the idea of face contrast microscope and if you want to know what are their functions of face contrast microscope as i told you to visualize objects in the living state in the active state without killing the sample right we can always use face contrast microscopy to visualize that so that's all about face contrast microscope if you like this video please hit the like button share this video with your friends and colleagues subscribe to this channel to get more videos like that in future thank you bye